All right, guys, welcome to Making Music. I'm Gary Weinhoff from Guitar Showcase, and with me today we have the fabulous Jack Van Breen from Guitar Showcase, the fabulous Sam Carlino from <laughs> Sam's Barbecue, and a great patron of Guitar Showcase, and the fabulous Dan Ernie, 34 years or so at Guitar Showcase, going on 34, something like that. Sunday. We're getting close. We're getting <laughs> close. He's really, he started there when he was three years old. He's not as old as he looks. It's not a, it's not a problem. Well, today our, our show is about guitars and some vintage guitars, some mandolins, and we're going to talk about some reproductions of some of the instruments. So, uh, Sam, why don't we start with this, uh, this mandolin. Now, is this an original or is this a reproduction? Well, I'll tell you, this is a reproduction of a 1923 F5 Lloyd Lore mandolin made by the Gibson Mandolin and Guitar Company. And they made uh, just over 200 of these dating back to um, 1922 to 24. And they're in such high value today, they're in the $185,000 range. So for, for an original? For an original. This uh -huh. is a copy. And this is a distressed copy, as you can probably tell from the scratches, scratches on, on the back and, and the distressing of the varnish. It's got scratches and, and the varnish is coming up. And they, they authenticated this so well that it, it, it really has that vintage vibe to it. it, it People want an old, old style mandolin, but you know, obviously you can't afford to pay the $180,000 price tag, nor would you want to bring it outside either. So. Oh, it sounds great, yeah. too. Now, well, wait, excuse me, is this the one that Charlie Darrington did? That's Charlie Darrington, uh, who just recently passed away. That's was, a sad story. Yeah, it is a sad story. He, just, he was the acoustic engineer for, for Gibson Guitar Company, and last mm -hmm. year I was at Lorefest, and there's a photo of me that, that ended up in the, the Chronicle, where I was around all of these vintage mandolins, they, they come to one place and, and they went to Bakersfield last year for a big meeting of the mines and I got to inspect and play, uh, I want to say in the neighborhood of 40 mandolins, which was incredible. You're talking about seven to ten million dollars worth of instruments in one little area. And I was able to to, to compare them, them and compare them. Do we have a shot of that? Yeah, I, I think mean, that, is that on the yeah. where, where was that on, on newspaper? It was in the Chronicle, Chronicle. and it got picked up uh, on the AP wire and, and was shown uh, uh -huh. all over the, the country. I had people calling me there from back is. east saying, yeah. "Then yeah, look, I saw you in the now, paper." You, so what were you looking at? In I the was shot? looking at mine, and my okay. friend Rich Evans was actually looking at a, a real one, and we were comparing notes as far as. Uh, at one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah analyst. exactly. The difference okay. between you well, know, that's the that's cool. Well, then, and then, Jack, what have you got there? That's this is one of yours, Sam, right? This yes. is okay. Yep. You bought mm -hmm. this at Guitar Showcase, yep. I assume. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I and bought all my instruments at Guitar Showcase over the years. Now this is an OM forty five Roy Rogers yep. commemorative. What a beautiful instrument! Yeah, it really is. Sounds a, great. Too. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> And it's got his signature on it. That's yeah. it. That's okay. That's, actually, let me his, show his, the back of that guitar. His son that's, actually signed signed the uh, the label inside with Chris Martin. Yeah. His his son and, did. Yes. And Christopher Martin, mm -hmm. the president okay. of the Martin Guitar Martin. Company. Martin, and he's the fourth or fifth. What is he? He's the, he's fourth? the fourth. 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 Mm -hmm. They've been in that generation since 1833. That's a very cool guitar. Well, Sam, tell me you you have now. This is a new reproduction of an right. old guitar. Exactly. Okay. Which is, which is a neat thing, and, and I firmly believe that these are tomorrow's collectibles, don't you, Dan? Absolutely. I mean, I mean it's I already mean, been proven when we go on and talk about some of the electrics and what's happened with them. Uh, when these companies are able to keep these limited productions actually really limited, they have absolutely taken off, and the value has just skyrocketed very quickly. And, and you'll see sometimes limiteds of 25, sometimes they do 50. Martin is amazing. I don't know where they pick these numbers up, but they'll do 71 of one or 83 of another or 52. I mean, they never do 50 or 100. It's always some bizarre number. And I'll have to ask them sometime why, you know. Where they pick yeah, that where, number. Where they're doing that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's always a good one. Well, Dan, tell me, in your experience then, is it the, the lower the number in the limited edition? Absolutely, and who is behind it? The star who is the power endorsing the star, the star power? Okay. Uh, there's no doubt in the recent past uh, that you know, for acoustic guitars, Eric Clapton, of course, has, has a guitar out. Steve Miller, I mean, Martin's done a lot of stuff. Taylor has done with the Doyle Dykes and some of the newer stars. Uh, they've done some great limited editions as well. Uh, Gibson, the same way with the Lennon. 
and uh, and the Elvis Presley. I mean, this just goes on and on. But these sure. great players and where they keep it actually limited. Uh, when you when you start running into two, three, four hundred, you know, it kind of feels like a Kincaid picture. And and I don't know about you, but I you yeah. know I just kind of get blown away when I walk by one of those and you know one of seven thousand. Yeah, know, that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't gets work a for me. You know? away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Sam, you've got a you've got an old Martin back yeah, here. Yeah, I, I got a, a nice story. And if Jack can take that sixty-five D eighteen up, and uh, we'll talk about this for a minute because I been going into Guitar Showcase since uh, 1982 when I first started playing guitar and I started collecting about 10 years ago and, and every time I go in I'd bug Dan I'd say hey you got any old Martins old, any old Martins and the answer was always uh, nothing right now or we got this we got that and f one day he said yeah we, we have this old beater but it's 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 all it's all messed up the the bridge is coming up a quarter ranch and the neck is needs a re you know reset and, and the frets are real bad and I said, well, ask Gary what he wants for it. So Gary gave me a very fair price on it. And, you know, this guitar, which, which cost me less than $1,000 initially, uh, after getting all the work done, is in excess of $4,000 now. Yeah, and I and wish it, I'd never sold it to you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you always say I, that. And I thank you, I thank you for, for letting this old beater go, because it looked like a, a boat oar. You but know? What, yeah, at the time, and you did yeah. put substantial work, but yeah. let's hear this old beater. Yeah, let, yeah let's, let's hear, hear something. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful guitar. That's a perfect example of being able to find an old guitar, whether it's at a, a garage sale or whether, you know, you know somebody who has a, a, a good guitar, like Gary was saying before. It has to be, you know, a good one. It has to be the yeah. major American makers, and I've said yeah. this on other shows, and I'd like to say it again. Yeah. American guitars are the ones that bring the premium prices. Now you've got one of the oldest, of course, was Martin. Yep. It's the oldest, the I oldest. think. And then the next were, would be Gibson, Gibson. and Epiphone. They go yep. in the 1890s, 1897 for Epiphone, for I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, l coming forward a little bit, 52 or so was when Gilt came out. Is that correct? About in there, Dan? I don't know. I'm not Some, as familiar with Somewhere in Gilt, 19, right. early 1950s, the American guitars are worth the money. And America is king. And that's you know, one that's of the, America. That's yeah. one of the things that I, I picked up from you, Gary, was that I asked you what's the best guitar because you can buy a, a, an old Strat right now for fifty or sixty thousand dollars, but it was a two hundred fifty dollar guitar forty five years ago. That's right. Now, my question to you and what you, the audience should be concerned with is what guitar should people be buying today that we're speculating, of course, but what would be worth something in the future? Well, I think Dan has a good example over there in the uh, in the Jimmy Page Les Paul. Oh now, there's, boy. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's three incarnations of, of this wow. guitar. Tell us about this one, Sam. That's your department. I know yeah. you know more about this because yeah, you're the, a fan. Yeah, the Jimmy Page uh, set was really well done by Gibson, the way that it was marketed. They only uh, limited this particular guitar to 25. 25. That's the what I call it. In the world. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, the next best part is... They distressed it exactly with every marking and scratch and, and dent and cigarette burn that Jimmy Page put on the, on the guitar. Then the next best thing is that he actually signed it. These all so, went to his house in England. Yeah, so these were shipped over to England and they were numbered up to 25 and he signed and then he played it. So because don't he got break to pick a string, through, he Jack. Got to, yeah, he got to pick through 35 guitars, and he picked the 25 best out of the 35 that were his out there. His DNA is on that guitar. That's right. So, That's so right. be careful, and, don't and, smear and his and DNA. What, well, what, this what, is what a this perfect example. Like 20, I mean, here's where new, new uh, guitars have taken off. So these came on the market, what, two and a half, three years ago, yeah. and they came mm -hmm. on at between twenty to $26,000. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people just turned them over immediately and, and made their money and were happy, and then all of a sudden it... It, it, like six months later, it popped up to thirty to thirty thousand dollars, and then a year later, uh, the the new bar was set at fifty five thousand dollars, and then it went to sixty thousand yeah. uh, dollars. So after two years, it jumped from twenty to twenty five, all the way up to sixty thousand dollars for that guitar. And now one just sold recently in New York for a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand. So this has gone in 100, three, under three years. 
from twenty to twenty-five thousand to one hundred thousand dollars. That would be, that would be this one, right? Don't drop the, it. The <laughs> one of the twenty-five. Yeah. That's a hundred thousand dollar guitar. I don't right. want to touch it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, and that's, and that's so beautiful. then to, to keep amazing. this, yeah, it is amazing. And what happened then is they came out with, and this is this, Murphy, the, uh, the, the Tom Murphy aged. The, but they hired him right. back to to age see this these. One. Right. And Tom Murphy is the key uh, is the key component to this as well. Mm -hmm. Is Murphy has a gentleman who's developed a reputation as making the best. Uh, copies uh, in the Gibson, and then he did a second run of 150. That's yeah, those one. those are one through we, 150 that that are numbered. Okay, there's there's the second one, and there was 150 of those. Still right. a very limited yeah. run. Distressed yeah, that is again, a, it, right, right, but and, not hand signed. And, but the they have a certificate authentic authenticate. Authenticity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and to prove Jimmy, it's real. Jimmy, yeah, yeah right. Jimmy. Uh, See, there you go. That's, that's an example of In fact, of yeah, that, that's what they look like. From, and and right. it's important, we need to talk about that just a little bit, because if you don't have documentation mm -hmm. to document the story of the guitar right. and who made it, because there are a lot of fakes yep. out there. Right. there is. I mean, they, they, you know, I mean, Mr. Murphy, if he weren't an honest man, could make fakes of these guitars Absolutely. if he didn't work for Gibson. Right. Absolutely. Each little crack supposedly in the finish he does with an exacto knife yes every mm -hmm. little thing in there that what looks like lacquer checking he carves in there with a yeah. knife i, just, I mean the man it, is a is yeah. a true artist is an artist and, and there's there's no doubt about it that there are probably other artisans in the world that could do these sorts oh, yeah. of things so i can't overemphasize how important it is to have documentation mm -hmm. stories and, pictures i have a great example yeah. we got in oh and this is maybe five six years ago a gentleman walked in and said i have a guitar that bill graham gave me and I go, yeah, right. Uh, you know, we get we get the Hendrix. I own Hendrix's guitar, and so and so. And I said, you know, prove it. He says, well, oh, let me. I have a picture of Bill and myself with Neil Sean in a picture. And I used to work for Bill, and he gave it to me, and he got it from BB King. I said, get the picture. The picture tells a thousand yeah. stories or a thousand words, and and it's worth. You know, it'll bring the value of that up. It makes it real. So he brings the picture back, and there's a picture of. Bill hugging the employee and Neil yeah. Sean with his girlfriend and looked like uh, uh, what Tommy Castro in the picture as well, all getting together and it authenticated this. Oh, and, and that's the one that's on the wall. And showcase. that's the wall we have yeah, it on yeah, the wall yeah. at Guitar Showcase. Yeah. And there's we have lots of stories like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's great. And the story and the pictures, they mean everything. They have it, to it be authenticates real. Right. The, no, they do. It, this is the third part of the incarnation of an unlimited run, but actually, isn't an unlimited run because they've only agreed to make in the neighborhood of 400 with Jimmy, by 475. Which is still yeah, pretty and, limited and they're, compared to some. They're in the process right now of renegotiating a new run. So this may be a final run for this. And you know that I think it's just amazing that you've, you know, you've got these limited editions with such big name players and they, right. and they, and but most, here, but most look of at the, this, we got 100,000, we have 20 to 30,000. And we have six thousand in yeah, there so virtually in that, in that range yeah. in that ballpark. Yeah. In that ballpark right I mean, now, in right? the book, mm -hmm. the book, um, the price guide. Let's talk about that for a second because it it actually is. Well, I think so we have far, a picture of the cover. Yeah. Of, yeah. Okay. Of the it's, price guide. It's so far behind the times. If we can look at that just to show what that price guide looks like, Dan, you have one there yeah. too. I know. The the problem is is that the market is changing. There we go. Here's There's the picture. That's like. what we needed. Yeah. This is a great tool, and on guitars that are not up and coming, like a lot of the jazz boxes and a lot of the the older Epiphones or even some of the Martins and Gibson flat top acoustics, this is a decent tool. But for some of these guitars, they're just jumping so fast that, for instance, that guitar that we know one sold for a hundred thousand dollars back east somewhere. I don't know who did it. Is shown in there at under thirty thousand dollars, isn't it? Yeah. And and that's, that's ridiculous. That's, I mean, that's how far behind. That's two years behind. That's one yeah. that yeah. has fallen behind, that's fallen right. through the cracks. But it, this is why you need it. I mean, that there's five or six price guides out right now. That has gotten closer than any other price guide we've seen. It is the best I've Consistently seen. Consistently yeah. better. Well, Sam, got, you do I a lot of research. You, I, I'm really into this, and I got to tell you, I went in last week because I called up, and, and it's January, and I said, "Do you guys have the 2007 price guide?" They said, "Yes, we do." <coughs> so I shot down to Showcase, and I said, "How? You know, where are they at?" And they said, and "Dan says we got three copies over there," and I said, "I'll buy them all." And Gary said, what do you need three copies for? And I said, well, I need one for my office. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I need one for my, my home. I need one for my car. Because if I'm on my way home and I see a garage sale and I stop and I find an old uh, Martin uh, ukulele and mm. I want to know what that ukulele is worth, I can flip to that price guide and, and there's a generalization of price that, that 
you know, the instrument's worth. That gets you yeah. in the ballpark. Yeah. Right. So I know I'm not overpaying for it. So that's important. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a starting point. Yeah. And, and we, we have to have a reference. Dan, I know it's tough. You know, at Guitar Showcase, when we buy vintage guitars, which we've done for 40 years, 41 now, uh, Dan is, is, is a classic. I, I like your three prizes. Okay, here's, here's the guitar. And, you know, if this were, this is a reproduction, which is a Jeff Beck reproduction. This mm -hmm. is made by John English. It's serial number 101. Uh, it, it's a beauty. By Fender. Right? By Fender, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, so it, and it has all the documentation. Uh, I believe we have some documentation on, on this particular guitar. We have what mm -hmm. the Fender Custom Shop certificates look like. Yeah, here it is right there, here. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. this is the kind of thing. The other one was from Gibson. This one is from Fender. And it says Jeff Beck Esquire, uh, serial number 101. And this is the kind of thing that we need to have yeah. with this kind of guitar. But when Dan buys a guitar like this, and Dan does this a lot, okay, because people will come and they'll say, well, someone passed away, this guitar was under the bed, what is it worth? And, and Dan, you usually give them three prices, like mm -hmm. cash today, if you want to wait six months, and then, and then in a year. And, right. and kind well, of explain a retail, how you do that. Well, there's a retail price. There's a quick sell and a slow sell. And then there's also guitars with issues. So most of the guitars, everything has been picked clean so much that you very rarely see guitars coming in anymore that don't have issues, which means they're not 100% original. You can get a guitar that may look scraped up like this Telecaster or Esquire, but if it's all original, even though the finish is worn off, it's still original. The frets haven't the, been changed. The original parts. The, the original cool. parts are all there, but what you'll get invariably now, since things, since there's so few and so many have left the country, is good, like I say, guitars with issues, refrets, uh, which is the least of the worries, but because most guitars over a certain period of time, the frets wear out. You mm -hmm. need to get them refinished. But the refinish is the real is the real stickler. It really kicks the value down. In right. some cases, fifty percent. So you're so you're you, saying, and and this is important to our this viewers. This is very important. Very important. Damn. This look is tore worth up more. Half of the finish missing. This look is worth more, more on an older guitar than this guitar than, than yeah. a brand new one like this. Yeah. Than 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 the look. And this here's is an old guitar that's been refinished. Yeah. Here's a guitar we got from auction uh, that belonged to Ross Valerie of Journey. And this went to auction, and this guitar, if it was all original, is in the neighborhood of, I'm going to guess, $80,000 right now. If it, were, if it had not been refinished right. and had not had some change right. parts. Right. And there's change parts. Especially with the pedigree. Right. And the it fact that, exactly. that you have it that, that belongs exactly. to you know, the, uh, the bass player for the journey when he mm -hmm. used it and in the studio. it's so tough for people. They say, oh, well, look at this. It's ugly. I just I want to get it to look good. You oh, know, and, no. and you don't understand that they just yeah. lost thousands yeah. in some cases well it makes it, it brings the value of this yeah. down to about twenty five thousand now, dollars now here's here's a here's an older one that's got a lot of wear this is one we got from southwest australia of all places this came halfway around the world and that's fairly rare because it has gold hardware right. and it's a hardtail this does not have a tremolo right this is very there's no very tremolo rare. with you know, original the, finish well there's a lot of people that thought turn that one over sam if we can see that behind that that white plate there's a big chunk of wood missing where you have the tremolo block and the springs and so forth and on this you don't and there's a lot of people who think that this sounds better it has more resonance and that it sustains better and I think you know, everything it, plays a part in, in the way these, these and instruments it sounds sound. good so yeah. that's you know that's that's part of it let's hear let's hear this this is a this is an original 62 yeah. right Stratocaster <laughs> But the guy on Lawrence Welk didn't sound like that. I mean, you know, he was doing Misty or something. That's that's what the Strat was originally made to do, by the way. Is that kind of yeah. and and Jimmy cha Jimmy Hendrix changed everything. Jimmy Hendrix changed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. So that's that's a good example of an all original guitar and kind of a rare one because of the gold hardware and the uh, the the hardtail lack of the tremolo. Yep. Although the tremolo is more popular. You know, this, yeah. but, but because it was more popular, this is more rare. By the way, yeah. my first Strat was a 59 and it was a hardtail, you know, right. and, and so this is kind of near and dear to me that way. Now, uh, this guitar has a lot of change parts and, right. and it's not worth any, you know, it looks much nicer. Well, yeah. there's a great story behind this because this actually went to auction and it got auctioned off for $25,000. Mm -hmm. This was about a year ago and it was bought by a local venture capitalist who's also a guitar collector. And he got it at, uh, this was out of an uh, auction house in Texas. And uh, he picked it up for $25,000 as an original 
50s Stratocaster. And he got it, opened it up, and he says, he looked at it, and in one second mm -hmm. he knew this is not original. So he brought it, and they, he called him and said, hey, I'm not going to pay 25000 for this. So he rescinded the sale. He rescinded the sale because it wasn't original. Right. And he renegotiated. Well, luckily for him, they renegotiated, and he, he got, it. got it at a reduced price. And, and they were willing to do that for him, which really keeps their reputation Absolutely. Up above ground because it, it uh, you that, know, it yeah. could have been in the. That well, leads me to the next. To say, the, say it lightly yeah. in the toilet after that. Yeah, the, the next caveat out yeah. there is beware of the frauds yeah, right. on the internet. Oh, believe me. I mean, this, yeah. you know, I mean, here was a, a, a legendary auction house who made yeah. an honest mistake. Right. Because exactly. someone told them something and they believed it or someone or cataloged it. They didn't know it, either. Yep. And they I just mean, looked at it and said, well, it's right, yeah. nicer than this one. It's probably original, you know? Yeah. And, on the internet, you get a lot of stuff like that. And that right now, you know, with the value of these as high as they are, there are people out there making incredible fakes, and they have absolutely uh, run their run through, you know, the yeah. auction houses oh, and and online. And, yeah. online. online, and we yeah. don't want to name any names, but. Uh, when you're doing a billion transactions and one percent are fall fraudulent, yeah. mm -hmm. that's so still a large lot, number. Uh, that's a large number. It's a large number. Yeah. So, so we've talked about this Jeff Beck Esquire. This is a recent limited edition. We only have about mm -hmm. five minutes, so we need to need to kind of go through one of the one of the more famous guitars that has been just recently given a lot of publicity is the Eric Clapton Blackie. Okay, probably you've seen the the hoopla mm -hmm. on the internet and. Uh, it's it's a guitar once again look at it it's all torn up and looks like you know been through the dryer and the ringer and drug behind the pickup and that sort of thing but this guitar was an original a copy of the original this is a reproduction mm -hmm. and uh these sold for twenty thousand uh, dollars they sold i think uh, in, a, and, in a couple hours yeah, yeah they sold them out in a couple hours yeah, about 100 because this is an exact reproduction made by Fender again yeah. with documentation right. of the uh, of the actual. I, I like know. even the cigarette burn up here because <laughs> you know Eric was was uh, always known for for leaving the cigarette burn right up on the headstock here and and right there there's there's a nice big black burn that, that's uh, absolutely that they've had to recreate and it'd be interesting to just to see how they you know how they'd even make that. <laughs> well, this is going to be an interesting piece because go a few with packs. His, with the amount that they made. <laughs> We don't know if this is going to collect value for a while. I mean, we don't I, know. I think it's going to go at a slower rate. Time will tell. Right. This started rather mm -hmm. high. This started at twenty thousand right. dollars, which is is you know, and for a reproduction. Although we're starting to see that now, mm -hmm. the guitar yep. manufacturers are not stupid. They're yep. going to say, hey, if these old things are worth one hundred and fifty, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Well, the original for this sold for what nine hundred eighty thousand. Ninety. Yes. Almost a million dollars. Yeah. Almost a million. Almost a million. And then they replicated it. So if you look at it that way, if you can buy a reproduction very cheap compared to right. you know, and it and it sold for for you know charity auction for, charity, for the Crossroads yeah. Foundation. And that's what most of these artists that are putting their name behind all these these signature model guitars, the proceeds that they 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 get from these guitar companies, most most of the time do go to uh, charities. Which Absolutely, is nice to see. and a lot of these artisans are are patrons, you know, and and. Uh, they they take care of us. Well, we're we're just about out of time. Have you got anything you want you to know, talk about, real quick? I, I want to mention that Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, let me get okay, that for because you. Because that's a perfect example of a guitar that came out in the price range of about ten thousand dollars, and now these are in the neighborhood of thirty. And this one and look how really beat, beat up. up that yeah, puppy this is. <laughs> Stevie really did a number on his. And again, that's a and reproduction of, a of reproduction. his favorite guitar. Right. And, right. and the original's in a vault, and his, his brother uh, is in charge of it, and he allowed them to take it and actually dismantle it. And the neck and every part of this guitar is exactly built. It's there, right. With a micrometer to, down to Stevie Ray Vaughan's. Even the pickups are specially wound. It's an amazing, amazing instrument. And uh, it, it's it, ugly, it just but goes it's... to show that, that, that there are value in newer guitars if you're looking for what's going to be worth right. something in the future. How many of these did they run, do you know? I think they had a hundred. I think, I think around a hundred. Right. Yeah. And, and today's, today's limited editions and the special you know, artist guitars are mm -hmm. going to be tomorrow's collectibles. Right. Yep. And so for the people who weren't around in the 50s or the 60s to buy yep. this stuff when it was cheap, you can buy the new stuff and yep. hopefully hold it long enough. In some cases, like those Jimmy Pages, it was almost yep. overnight. You know it what you mentioned 400%. before, but I, I really do believe, I mean, if, if you look at the last uh, five to ten years, the stock market and, and compare it to the vintage uh, instrument market, I think vintage instruments 
have, they've outperformed, have, have outperformed the, the, the Dow. Well, I think and the this S&P. is why you've seen them spike because yeah. two years ago they were running articles in business magazines that said this is a great investment, and all of a sudden now you're getting non-players getting into Absolutely. this market. And we have seen in the last six months to one year a spike like we've never seen ever in the history of vintage guitars. It's, they have taken off, and I can't true. even keep up. Yeah. With, it's hard. It's hard for any of us. Yeah, well, and not, what you're seeing is a lot of now a lot of non-players see it as an true. investment, as a as a beautiful work of art investment. Yeah. Playable art. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Right. Well, we're out of time, guys. We got to go. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Right. Thank you, Jack. Thanks. Let's hear Blackie here as we go out. <laughs> <laughs>